Okay. I'll, I'll set you here. Well, that's wonderfully horrifying. It's Halloween. Happy Halloween. Happy spooky season. Happy spooky day. I am very excited. I am a big fan of Halloween, even though you can't tell because I'm, I'm not wearing anything Halloween-y. I put on black lipstick. That's about it. So I did a little poll on my Instagram asking if you guys would rather me put up a TBR jar video or a surprise spooky video. Guess which one won. Get guess. No idea? No, no idea. Obviously this, uh, the title doesn't give anything away. Totally not. So for this video, I decided <laughs> that I wanted to read possibly the most chaotic uh, book that I have ever stumbled across. I'm saying chaotic uh, because I have no other words for it. I haven't read it yet. That's what this video is going to be. Hi, hello, my name is Rachel. Today we're going to be reading The Haunted Vagina. You heard me. I have never read bizarro fiction before in my life. I am a big fan of horror, but this is a genre I've never like, uh, dabbled with, you know? The Haunted Vagina has a very simple uh, kind of storyline. Basically our uh, main character, who I don't know the name of because I'm unprepared to make this, discovers his girlfriend's vagina is haunted. Do you see why I wanted to make this video? <laughs> Rather than uh, just reading this, you know, work of art on my own, that I wanted to include all of you in this. Cause you know, what's spookier than your girlfriend's family being haunted by ghosts? Yeah, I, I don't know why I'm doing this either. The Haunted Vagina is by uh, Carlton Mellick, I think is his name. Maybe not, should probably, should probably recheck that. Carlton Mellick, that is his name, the third. One, two, three, he's, he's the third, very important. Without further ado, let's get into this, I guess. It's only like 60 pages long and don't worry, I'm not going to read you all of it. However, I kind of thought that you, you should come on this journey with me. And yes, I'm probably going to spin around a lot in this video because I mm, have so many thoughts and I haven't even read the first page. <laughs> so let's begin. Chapter one. I've been scared to have sex with Stacy ever since I discovered her vagina was haunted. I mean, mode. When we first met, I didn't notice her vagina was haunted at all. It seemed perfectly fine, better than fine. It was great, at least for the first year. But after we got engaged and she moved in with me, I noticed odd sounds coming from her while she slept. Right? Exorcisms, maybe? Okay. At first, I thought it was her snoring. I thought there was a television left on somewhere in the house. I heard voices in the dark. Whispers, then laughs, then cries, then howls. I will keep back my comment. The sounds were muffled, but seemed to become clearer and clearer with each passing night. Where the heck are those noises coming from? <laughs> I asked Stacy one evening. She blinked herself awake. Huh? I hear voices coming from the walls. Oh honey. Oh honey. <laughs> oh, she said. I'm serious, I said. That's not coming from the walls, she said. It's coming from me. From you? From inside me, she said, pulling off the covers and pointing at her crotch. I snorted at her. Me too, bro. Listen, she said, pulling my head onto her lap and pressing my ear against her vagina. I'm going to assume Carlton Mellick doesn't realise that the vagina is actually inside uh, the body. Not not on the outside, that's a vulva, friend. But um, let's not get into the semantics. It was like listening to the ocean in a hairy flesh seashell. <laughs> ah! You know whenever people are like, oh my god, male writers writing about the female body. I understand it now. <laughs> I, I see it. I see why people have a gripe with that. 
So basically, they have like a short conversation here in which uh, Stacy says there is in fact a ghost in her vagina. And her boyfriend is like, hi, what? Hey? Like, what does he think? Did the ghost like sign a lease? Being like, yes, I will reside in your vagina for exactly 12 months. Thank you. So uh, he recommends calling a priest to which Stacy says, what's a priest gonna do? Stick a cross up there and cast the spirit sight? And he says, maybe. And you know what? There's probably a porn category for that, just saying. As it turns out, Stacy is uh, quite a fan of her haunted vagina. She uh, says, who else has a haunted vagina? My other boyfriends thought it was kind of sexy. And you know what, this protagonist? Fair to him. He shook his head and he found it repulsive. <laughs> But the fact that I was scared of her vagina seemed to turn her on. Stacy Chuck, are you okay? Do you, do you need to talk? I feel like she might need to talk. I feel, mm, I'm concerned for your well-being, Chuck. But like, let's put that aside. <laughs> I, I can't summarize this. I just need to read it. So they shagged. We get a lovely description of our narrator's crusty lower lip and um, apparently she slid his penis into her ghostly regions. But for me, it was the most awkward sex I'd ever had. You know what? I mean, at least he's aware of it. Ghostly breaths against the tip of my dick. You know, when I made my channel, I didn't expect that I would be reading like ghostly erotica, but like here I am. So uh, let's continue, I guess. So within the rest of the first chapter, we get, you know, a little insight into the story of Steve, as it turns out his name is, and Stacy. You know, beautiful love story. Stacy is apparently from Thailand. She is over a foot taller than Steve, who's a skinhead and wants to be a musician, but is failing to do so and they're both in their 30s and one time he gave a $200 coat to a homeless man which uh, apparently made Stacy fall in love with him. Modern romance, I guess. So Stacy calls her clit a glow worm. I have nothing to say about that, I just want you to know that that's a thing as well so that'll play in your mind like it's playing in mine because would you call your clit a glow worm? Would you? Even the client doesn't agree. I don't even think you want to know what I just read. To, to cut it short, a hand explodes out of her vagina. Aha. When I said I wanted a spooky read, I didn't necessarily think hands coming out of vaginas would be, uh, would be it. But apparently it is. Yes. My chair just cracked. Even it doesn't want me to be doing this, but oh, oh well, I'm doing it. Basically, uh, to explain the hand coming out of the vagina scenario, because I don't think you, uh, you want to hear the nitty gritty details, um, they shagged and, and that hand came out, came out of her vagina. Uh, apparently, uh, her stomach, which has expanded as if she is nine months pregnant, uh, moves like it is filled with a million cockroaches. And between her legs, a skeletal hand is reaching out of her and Steve you know the height of intelligence says what the fuck and you know what what the fuck Steve I'm sorry I know you love her I know you're engaged but like maybe a hand coming out of her vagina and like trying to claw your face off might be a bit of a deal breaker like I think the Pope would condemn a divorce in this situation in this dramatic moment we discover that it is not just a hand that is trying to claw its way out of Stacy's vagina, but it is in fact a skeleton. 
she basically births a demon skeleton that's just like crawling out of her vagina and apparently it bleeds ink. Now I don't know about you but I don't think that's the way birth happens. But you never know I could be wrong maybe maybe this is a you know, an exception to the rule. Stacy is traumatized uh, by the fact that she just had to push out a skeleton that uh, was hell bent on murdering her boyfriend. So uh, her and Steve are just uh, sitting down trying to, trying to have a little talk, you know, recuperate from the situation after he murdered Mr. Skeleton, who apparently melted into the carpet. Don't want to think about how much that's gonna cost to clean. Between a bottle of Sunflower IPA and uh, freshly squeezed orange juice, they discuss the origins of Stacy's haunted vagina. She tells me everything that has to do with her haunted insides. She tells me that ever since she was a little kid, she's heard noises coming from inside of her. She thought it was normal. Her parents never noticed or pretended not to notice. When she was six years old, for a few months, she had an imaginary friend who used to come out of her vagina and play with her. Okay, another little girl, about her age, with paper white skin and funny slimy horns on her head. She doesn't remember much from this time, but she had always assumed the girl was just her imagination. She thought maybe it was just her young mind giving form to the voices she heard coming from inside of her. But now she's not quite so sure. When she was a sophomore in high school, she realized that her vagina was different from other girls. Her first love was a girl named Charlene. Oh, hello, gay. Love that. <laughs> we love a bisexual haunted vagina who was a nerdy freshman who always spoke in a fake French accent. The first time they were naked together, giggling and scared, Stacy's vagina called out to Charlie and knocked the French accent right out of her voice. That's fucked up. Not said by me, said by the fake French accent girl. Love that. Apparently, uh, after this exchange that they had, Stacy decided that uh, she wasn't going to go near girls anymore, you know, because they're just too judgmental about voices coming from your vagina. So uh, she just started sleeping with guys instead, you know, because like they don't care if a vagina talks as long as they can put something in it, you know? He just crawled into her vagina. Do I want to read this? We're 40%, let's continue. <laughs> I, I literally said to myself, I was like, I'm not gonna do another update until I've like, you know, find something interesting. And he's just working his way through this tunnel. <laughs> and within the narration says, the cave gets smaller the closer I get to the opening because he sees a, a light in the far distance. And then he says, maybe it leads to another vagina. Maybe this is a tunnel between dimensions connected by two women's vaginas. <laughs> I have no regrets in reading this for that one line. I have no regrets. <laughs> My lighting is like progressively getting worse uh, throughout this video, so we'll just ignore that. But basically, a little update. I'm halfway through. And, um, Steve went into vagina land, or as Stacy calls it, the womb world, and, uh, it was an interesting time. Um, he didn't do anything but try to get out, so, uh, you know, he tunneled on in, uh, fell into this whole world which seems to be inside of Stacy. Uh, there's, there's grass, there's trees, and there is a woman with bunny ears that walks about naked. That's about it. <laughs> and then he was like, you know what? I've seen enough, I'm outy. And he tried to get out and found out Stacey was driving. So we couldn't exactly just be like, hi, you love, do you, do, you mind, do you mind if I just hop on out here? You pause at the intersection, do you mind if I hop on out? That wasn't possible. So Stacey gets back home, um, removes her fiance from her vagina and uh, they just have a wee chat about uh, what happens on the inside. So far, uh, this video has changed from I am going to read you this to me reading it with my face like this. 
for about 20 minutes at a time. Just, I don't know what the fuck is going on. I'm deeply amused, I won't even lie. I'm like sitting here being like, what the fuck is going on? What the fuck is going on? Is this what men think vaginas are like? Do they think that there's like a world inside there? You know what, I wouldn't be surprised. I really wouldn't. Maybe this is what all like the male like fiction writers are really thinking of when they think about women. They're like, wow, there's a world in that vagina. Maybe it holds secrets, like a fleshy seashell. <laughs> I'm pretty sure my like 14 year old neighbor can hear me saying this and uh, you know what? I hope I traumatize him because he keeps me up every fucking night yelling at his xbox so you know what you have to hear me yelling about a haunted vagina after a long hard day at the office steve comes home and finds stacy with a shit ton of supplies supplies for what you may ask well to go spelunking inside her womb i love halloween to this steve says i'm not camping out in your vagina overnight to which stacy says not in my vagina in my womb because that makes a difference, check. Apparently Stacy ends up like persuading Steve to do this and there he is crawling back on through and talking to Stacy uh, with a walkie talkie. Don't know how they're getting reception in there, but you know. While Steve adventures inside of Stacy's vagina, he finds many a thing. He finds a skeleton army just chilling, uh, chattering at him, evidently wanting to kill him. However, they're stuck in a pit so they can't reach him. Uh, as he explores a little further, gone is uh, the beautiful wilderness scene that we had, and he stumbles across a little uh, little village, a little town, perhaps. Uh, I imagine it very much as a Scooby-Doo-esque uh, western, you know? You know what I mean? You know what I, If you know, you know. And while he's there, he discovers there is many a statue, black, melty statues of uh, women in various positions crying. Is this commentary on what it is like to be a woman and the state of our wombs? Who knows? But within the vagina, he finds Stacy's childhood best friend. Oh yes, you heard that right. The girl with the horns, uh-huh. He find her and apparently, no, she's exactly like a CGI character. She's like Jar Jar Banks. I'm sorry, sir, what? You telling me Jar Jar Banks is just like living up life in her womb? I've got some questions. You know, I always wondered how they made the set for Star Wars. We discover female Jar Jar Binks' name is actually Fig. She takes Steve on a little adventure, you know, going through the scenic route of uh, the weird womb town. And she says that Stacy's not her friend, you know? Very, very important to know. Because Steve, he thinks, hey, hey, are you not, are you not Stacy's friend from when she was younger? And Fig's like, nah, bruh, nah. She doesn't think I'm real. She's not my friend. That bitch, nah. I may live inside her, but that doesn't mean I like her. And as they're dandering about, apparently there are wrought iron houses that become normal houses. And Steve, he, uh, he pauses to take a picture. And the black metal stops halfway through the homes here. One half is wooden and perfectly constructed. The other half is distorted and black. Steve points to the black and asks the girl, What's that? That's the cancer, she says. Sir, what? So he's like, he's like, what, cancer? And she says, oh yeah, yeah, it, it took everyone away. Care to reiterate? No? Okay. Uh, Steve, apparently that doesn't bother him. He's like, oh, okay, cancer in my girlfriend's womb, that's sweet. And he says, yeah, where are we going? Fig, she just says, we're going to dinner. What can you eat in womb town? Is there placenta? Is that your meal? Girl, I don't know. Also, apparently, the skeletons are called Zephyrins. Just so you know. Fig, uh, she doesn't live alone in this world. Uh, there's many people there. Uh, they're all old, though. And uh, Fig, she's very sad. She can't play with them. Which, okay. 
So Fig introduces Steve to, you know, all her womb mates. Women? No. Okay, sorry. Shouldn't have done that. That's a bad joke. So, uh, she introduces him and uh, Steve comes to the realisation, okay, they're all old. Uh, but not only that, they don't speak the language that they speak, you know? So evidently they have a, they have a connection. And apparently they're all uh, grouped into couples because uh, daddy issues? Parent issues? I don't know said Stacy was adopted. Is this all just a metaphor for the issues that we have inside stemming from our families? Who knows? You know what? I gotta say, I'm 70% in and uh, this book has, uh, you know, it's really went above and beyond my expectations. I thought I was just gonna read about a spooky vagina, but no, I'm here learning what it really means to be human. Apparently it means our vaginas lead to a different dimension. I don't know. After sitting down and uh, making friends with uh, Stacy's womb people, Steve, uh, he decides, you know what? It's, I gotta go. It's time, it's time for me to leave. You know, check, I didn't bring my sleeping bag. I wasn't expecting an overnight stay, so I gotta, I gotta jet. Fig ain't happy. Uh-uh. Fig is not happy. She says, what? Bruh but we're supposed to play. And he said, I thought we did play. We, we made things out of clay, that was fun. And she was like, no, that's not playing, that was dinner. Okay. And Steve's like, no, Fig, Fig, it, it's not you, it's me. I gotta go, I, I gotta jet, I, I gotta get home. You know, Stacy, she's cooking dinner. Uh, we been uncomfortable, me just living in her womb right now. And Fig is not pleased with this, so she's like, you can't leave me. So she sends the Zephyrns after him, you know, skeleton people, and they just chuck him in a mine shaft. I don't know how these people be mining inside a vagina. I have questions. They're not going to be answered, but I have them. So during Steve's time inside uh, the Stacy's womb, he's still in there, by the way. 78% and he's still in there. Um, while he was in the mine shaft, we come to this realization. So, during the time that Steve has been adventuring within Stacy's womb, his fingertips, the, they've been feeling a bit weird. They've been feeling a bit, a bit odd, a bit squishy, so to say. And uh, he ends up stuck in this mine shaft alone, left to die, so it seems. But oh no, he does not die. In fact, you may say he is born again. His skeleton steps outside of his body and just uh, lives its wee life, you know, chit chit chattering like the other skeleton friends that we've made. And uh, Steve comes to the realization he is not exactly like Fig. Maybe he is, in fact, Jar Jar Binks. To be confirmed. So Fig, she she's happy with this change. She's like, oh my God. She's like, let's go play. You're stuck with me now. Oh my God, friends forever. And Steve is just like, I, he's like, I don't know what I'm doing with my life. He's like, I'm Jar Jar Banks, what the fuck? <laughs> you know what, Steve, he petties Fig and, and he says, and he thinks to himself, no wonder she's been crying, weeping out of Stacy's vagina for the past 20 odd years. You know, she's lonely. These things happen, you know, like, you just, sometimes you just don't understand girls, you know? We cry out of vaginas, like it's it's no biggie. As uh, Steve and Fig, you know, go about their day, you know, play, uh, there's an earthquake. An earthquake within a womb, you say? What could this be? For a second I thought, uh, we're gonna Steve and King this and we're just gonna have a whoosh of blood. Good old period. Nah, uh-uh, I was wrong. They're all looking in one direction, over in the distance. Is this the one? Is this the one? Fig yells over the rumbling. What the hell is going on? I stand up on a table to see over the crowd, to see what they're looking at. They're all looking towards the cliff where I came from, but there's nothing of interest over there. Wait a minute. Stacy's not. A geyser erupts. Out the side of the cliff, a burst of white fluid. Another burst of white fluid and another. She is. Stacy's 
having sex. Now I have some questions here. What happens to the cum? Is this the sustenance for these people? Is this what Fig and her friends eat? Does it just like flow like a waterfall and they put their little cups under it and they go, mm, sustenance. Like, I have questions. Carlton, Carlton Mellor, the third, one, two, three. Inform me, tell me what happens here. You're not, you're not explaining this. The crowd goes wild and Fig says, watch for it. Watch. And she's pointing, she's pointing at that geyser. And they're watching. And the clouds, they scatter. As if wiped away by a rag. I'm reading this directly, by the way. You know, beautiful. Revealing the dome-shaped purple sky. Then the entire crowd leaps up and seeing cheering as a pink film stretches across the atmosphere, covering us like a blanket. It happened. It happened, Fig cries. I don't need to ask what they're cheering about. I already know. Stacy's been impregnated. Is this why we have a wooden city? The, it, girl, I don't think there's enough space for a baby in here. I, I mean, I don't know. Steve did go from like, you know, human sized to uh, microscopic. So like maybe there is enough space for a baby. Like what are they going to do? Are they going like co-parent? Like Steve on the inside for the first nine months being like, it's okay Steve, like I know you cheated on me, but like I'm looking after the baby, like what? Is this how co-parenting works? Like when there's three of you? So there's two on the outside, one on the inside? Do they take shifts? Questions. Steve is still within Stacy's womb. I don't, I don't know if he's actually ever going to get out of here, but um, you know what? After realizing that Stacy has moved on, she's pregnant, he, uh, you know, he starts to get used to life uh, in her womb. You know, him and Fig, they get along happily together. Turns out playing was, uh, was a bit of a code word, if you get what I mean. So now they're, uh, they're having a baby, you know, very happy, very lovely. It's been, uh, it's been a while. They just watch the baby grow, you know, in the sky above them. Because that's how it works. And Steve, you know, one day, fakes asleep. Her with her little bump, you know, inception, pregnancy, inside of pregnancy. I don't, I don't know. So Steve, yeah, he finds the old walkie-talkie and he thinks, you know what? I'll give it one last go gets up onto the roof and he says, Stacy, Stacy, you there? And the baby, it moves its arm. And Steve's like, oh shit, what's happening? And Stacy, she, she talks back on the walkie talkie and she says, Steve. And he's like, oh my God, Stacy. They, they say they miss each other, you know, beautiful, you know, lost love, you know, just how things go. He, he asks about the father of the child and Stacy, she's apologetic. She's like, Steve, I don't know who he is. He was just this guy, like I was so torn up that so he like disappeared inside of my womb, never to return again. So I just like shagged this guy because uh, in her words, I was hoping to join you in his cum. Okay, Stacy, Stacy, she says, Fig, Fig, you're in love with Fig, aren't you? And Steve's like, you know, these things happen. And she says she was so lonely her cries always calling out to me, begging me to send her somebody to love. You know, because Fig's master plan was, Hey, Stacy, send a guy into your womb for me. She was always so sad and angry. And then, after you went inside of me, I wasn't crying anymore. There was singing. She was happy. She was in love. And Steve's just like, Okay, so? And she's like, I knew it. I knew when you didn't come back that you didn't love me anymore. You loved her. Because she was like singing all the time and like you didn't talk to me on your walkie talkie so like you didn't love me. So I shagged this guy and I hoped you would die. And drown. In his sperm. And you know what she thought? She thought they did. And she was like, oh shit. I killed him. I should have sent someone to see if you were okay. 
but it doesn't stretch anymore. I was hoping you were still alive in there, inside of me. Real emotional, real heartfelt. You know what, Stacy? I feel for you. And Steve said, yeah, but uh, the world isn't inside you anymore. It's inside your baby. What? We're talking worms in worms. We are talking inception via conception. Sometimes I really wonder, like, especially times like now, I wonder when it comes to some writers, I'm like, how do you think of these things? Like, yeah, they, I was going to justify it, but I can't, I can't. Okay, so we have, oh, we have 4% left, ladies. Oh my God, this is the end, this is the end. You know what? We only got two pages. We go have a lovely read along. So Stacy says, she says, I wanna see you again, Steve. I don't care how long it takes. Maybe you can come out of my daughter when she grows up and you can be with me again. And Steve, Stevie says, I'm not exactly human anymore, Stacy. I don't think I can return to that world. And Stacy says, I'll come to you. Woman, you do realize you're just saying you're gonna like slip inside into your daughter's vagina in like 20 years time? Now, I don't know the semantics of like spelunking in your daughter's womb to a new world, but something tells me that's incest and something tells me the Pope wouldn't be happy. Remember earlier I said the Pope would be okay if they divorced because of her vagina talking? Mm -mm, he wouldn't be happy with this? Mm -mm, no, sir. So Stevie's like, Stacy, I love you more than the whole world. But I've got a responsibility here. I've got people that need me. I've moved on. I feel like I made a latex and I look like Jar Jar Banks and I'm having baby Jar Jar. I've moved on. And Stacy says, I know. And he says, I'm married, I have a child coming, you know, baby Jar Jar, little Banks. And she says, I know, but are you happy? Yeah. He tells her, yeah, I I'm very happy. She says, I just want you to be happy. He says, I am. And she cries into that walkie talkie. And he says, Stacy. He says, yeah, I'll always be with you. She continues crying and then the walkie cuts out. He thinks she turned it off or maybe threw it to the other side of the room. There's another thing that he always hated about Stacy. She always cuts him off in the middle of a conversation for the sake of being dramatic. And that is the end. So what have we learned today, kids? Don't go spelunking into foreign vaginas. Uh, you know what? I feel like that's it. Oh, we also learned that uh, the vagina is a dimension to another world. Maybe every woman has this. You know what? Maybe Carlton Mellick cracked it. Maybe he cracked the code. Maybe this isn't some weird bizarro horror. Maybe this isn't something like to spook us. Maybe this is a real insight into the inner workings of a woman's anatomy. You know, maybe he's onto something. And when you're feeling alone at night, you just think to yourself, I've got a whole world in my womb full of baby Jar Jar Banks. Okay, that is, that's all for this video. I can't, <laughs> I genuinely have no words. I have sat here for the past hour and a half reading this, talking to you, explaining this, and I feel like I have transcended to another plane of existence. I just realized by finishing this book, I just hit my 50 book goal of the year. <laughs> the Haunted Vagina, my 50th book of the year. <laughs> like this <laughs> strange strange video um drop me a like drop me a comment tell me about the journey that you went on with me <laughs> and yeah um if you want me to do something like this again tell me i have a couple of other um interesting finds that i would uh, i'd be down for making a strange little informative video about maybe again so yeah that, that's all from me. How how you feeling, sir? Feeling good? Fe is that your song? Okay. So uh, let's 
play play that funky music. Wait, wait. Forget the haunting of Bly Manor. It's the haunting of the vagina. Happy Halloween!